Okay, so in this lecture we'll cover this concept of resonance. <clears throat> so this is one of the hardest concepts for students to get in organic chemistry. Uh, so it's a concept that's introduced in general chemistry one. I mean, I put a little bit of effort into trying to explain it in organic chemistry one. Some professors, I mean, in general chemistry one, some professors probably gloss over it, uh, but I tend to put a lot of effort into it because it's a very important concept in organic chemistry. Uh, so what is resonance? So it's the delocalization, so the movement of electrons through a pi system. And so what does a pi system mean? Uh, pi bonds, so if you remember, how do you make pi bonds? That's from p orbitals overlapping, right? So if you don't have pi bonds, you can't draw resonance structures. Only molecules that have pi bonds have resonance structures. Well, it's not totally true. You gotta have p orbitals, I should say. If you don't have p orbitals, you can't draw resonance structures. So the examples that I use in General Chemistry 1, and if you watch that video from General Chemistry 1 over resonance, uh, nitrate and acetate, so if we draw resonance structures for these, well, so the, the point is the double bond to oxygen doesn't have to be on the top oxygen. It could have been on the oxygen to the right. So we could draw nitrate like that, or it could be double bond to the oxygen on the left. Right, so we could draw nitrate like that as well and these are all resonant structures of each other right so this symbol this double-headed arrow is a symbol for resonant structures and if you notice so in these resonant structures the only thing that is different is where electrons are all of the atoms are in exactly the same space, same spot. So when you draw resonance structures, you cannot move atoms around. You can only move where electrons are. And does this have a pi system? Yes, it's got a pi system because you got a double bond right there, right? So, um, so this means you can move electrons through the pi system, and I'll show more about that in a minute. Um, but if we're drawing resonance structures, how do we get from the structure on the left to the structure in the middle? Uh, then what we need to do is uh, take two electrons from this oxygen and use them to make a double bond between oxygen and oxygen and then take the pi, one of the, pi, the two electrons in the pi bond and move them onto the top oxygen to make a third lone pair and then you would have the middle structure. So you draw arrows on the structure to show where the electrons are going and then you draw the new structure. <clears throat> so that would be the middle structure. And so now how do we get from the middle structure to the right structure? So we need a double bond to the oxygen on the left. So we need to take any of these three lone pairs on that oxygen, move them down to make a double bond. So if you notice, the arrow starts on the electrons and it ends up on the bonds. That means we're taking those two electrons and making a double bond. And then we need to take uh, one, of the double, one of the double bonds, which is the pi electrons, is the ones that we're grabbing. Um, and we're going to dump them onto the right oxygen as a third lone pair, and that gives us the structure on the right. All right, so that would be three different resonance structures for nitrate. What does nitrate really look like? It really looks like well, all of the bonds are symmetric. Right, it's got three equivalent NO bonds. So double bonds are shorter than single bonds. So if any of these static structures was what nitrate looked like, you would have one short bond and two long bonds but that's not what you find experimentally. What you find experimentally is all of the NO bond lengths are exactly the same. So sometimes you see nitrate drawn like that with the net negative one charge outside the brackets. I prefer that you never draw molecules like that in organic chemistry. I prefer that you draw them as either A, B, or C. Always draw one of the static structures. You just gotta keep in mind, it's really a hybrid of all of those three structures. So if we did the same thing for acetate, the other resonance structure for acetate looks like where right, the double bond could have been to the other oxygen could have been to that oxygen and the top oxygen could have had three lone pairs on a negative charge 
So one thing you have to do in this class is be able to use arrows to show how you get from one structure to the other structure. So what we need to do is, so this arrow oxygen on the right has three lone pairs, and in the structure on the right now it has two, so it lost a lone pair. Where did the third lone pair go? Well, the third lone pair was used to create a double bond. And for the oxygen on top, it had two lone pairs on the left and it has three lone pairs on the right. Where did that third lone pair come from? Well, it came from the pi bond. Those two electrons need to become a lone pair on the top oxygen. And that's all the arrows that you need. Okay, so now let's take, so these are, so now let's take some organic molecules. So what does this typically look like in organic molecules? Uh, so typically you may have an electron deficient atom. So that carbon only has six electrons around it. It likes to have eight, right? <clears throat> so electron deficient atom next to a pi bond. So if you have that scenario, you can draw a resonance structure. So what we would do is take one of the double bonds, move it over to the next position to make a double bond to the electron deficient carbon. And then you would have that structure. And so you might ask yourself or think to yourself, well, aren't those two equivalent? Technically they are, because if you just flip the molecule over on the right, then you get the molecule on the left. Um, but what this implies is that that positive charge does not reside on just one carbon. The positive char charge resides on two carbons. So each carbon, uh, so each carbon in reality, each carries one half of the positive charge density. <clears throat> okay, so so what are we really doing here? So this carbon, so if we go take the left structure, the carbon that's electron deficient, what is this hybridization? If you remember how to determine hybridization, well that carbon has one, two, three things attached to it. If it's got three things attached to it, if you remember the hybridization is sp2. Um, right, how can you figure that out? Well s1 and p2 is three equals three, right? If it's got three things attached, it's sp2 hybridized. So if you remember what sp2 hybridized atom looks like, any atom that's sp2 hybridized has a p orbital on it. So if we sketch out the pi system for this molecule, because the pi system is what matters when you're drawing resonance, the double bond, of course, is created by two pi p orbitals each has one electron in them, and they're overlapping side to side to create the pi bond. Right, that's the pi bond. And the carbon on the left is electron deficient. It's sp2 hybridized, so it has a p orbital. It's just empty. There's no electrons in it. Um, okay, so what's important to recognize here, so these two p orbitals are on adjacent carbons, so they can overlap, right? Well, these two p orbitals, let's change my color. These two p orbitals are also on adjacent carbons, so why can't they overlap? And the answer is they can overlap. <clears throat> if they're on adjacent carbons, they can overlap. So that means the electron in the middle p orbital can go to the left if it wants to. So this electron can go here into that p orbital, and then this electron can go into that p orbital and so basically what we've done now is we have moved electrons through a pi system that is resonance. All right, so now what we have is we have one electron here and one electron here, and we're gonna let those overlap to make a double one, and then the carbon on the right now only has six electrons around it, so it's positively charged, so it's electron deficient, and that structure is of course the structure. So one thing that you I'd want you to be able to do in this class is, is if I give you a molecule to sketch out the pi system and show me where the electrons are at and show me how the electrons move through the pi system to get from one resonance structure to the other resonance structure. Okay so another scenario where you can have resonance is you, if you have an electron rich atom. So that carbon's got a lone pair you calculate the formal charge, if you remember how to do formal charge, carbon's got four valence minus uh, three lines minus two dots. 
is a negative one charge. So that carbon's negative one, it's electron rich. If you have an electron rich atom next to a, a pi system, so this is a pi system, right? You got a double bond, so you can draw resonance structures. So what you would do in this case, let's see if I can move this down a little bit. So what you would do for resonance, so we're gonna take these two electrons. So the forest alone pair of electrons can go is straight down to a bond to make a double bond. And so if you do that, that puts, that carbon right now has four bonds already, right? It's got a double bond to carbon on the right, a single bond to carbon on the left, and the bond to hydrogen on it, so four bonds. And now we're gonna create a fifth bond. You can't make five bonds on carbon, right? Carbon can only make four bonds, so you gotta get rid of some electrons. So the ones we're gonna get rid of is one of the double ones, and we're gonna move those up to this carbon to make a lone pair. And so now what you have is now a double bond between those two carbons on the left, a single bond here, and now that carbon has a lone pair of electrons. And again, these two structures are equivalent to each other. Um, they don't have to be equivalent, they're just equivalent because of what each carbon has attached to it. But if one carbon on the end had a methyl and the other didn't, for example, then they would no longer be equivalent. But that doesn't really matter. But, the, but they are equivalent, so basically what this is saying is that negative charge does not reside on one carbon, that negative charge resides on two carbon. So in reality, each of the two carbons on the end has a negative one-half charge on them. Okay, so what does the pi system look like here? So this is, so what's the hybridization of that carbon? It's got three atoms attached and a lone pair. So if it's got four things, what's its, what's its hybridization? So it's four things, so it's sp3 hybridized. <clears throat> So the lone pair electrons is setting in an sp3 hybridized orbital. If you remember what sp3 hybridized orbitals look like, they have a big lobe and a small lobe. Big lobe on one side of the nucleus and a small lobe on the other side. And then the next two carbons are sp2 hybridized. They both have three things attached. So they both have a p orbital on them overlapping to make the double bond, the pi bond. Okay, so in this case, now you have an sp3 orbital with a lone pair of electrons that's adjacent to a p orbital. So those, those electron, those orbitals can overlap. All right, since they're on adjacent atoms, they're close enough in space to overlap. So what that means is the electrons can move from the lone pair into the pi system. So we're gonna take um, this electron and move it there. And we're gonna take one of these electrons and move it there. So we're moving electrons through a pi system, that is resonance. Okay, so in the process, this carbon on the left rehybridizes. It goes from sp3 hybridized to sp2 hybridized, right? And so now it's got a p orbital overlapping with the middle carbon's p orbital. And the carbon on the right was sp2 hybridized. All right, that was sp2, sp2, sp3. And now this is sp2, sp2, and sp3. Because now that lone pair, so now that or orbital on the right has two electrons in it, so now it's a lone pair. And so that looks like, that pi system now looks like that, which is the structure. Okay, and the other scenario where you could draw resonance structures is two pi bonds, or a sequence of pi bonds on adjacent carbons, two or more. It doesn't have to be carbon either, it could be any atom. Okay, so if we wanted to draw resonance structures here, um, so let's see. So we could do something simple. We could just take two electrons in the pi bond, move them up onto an atom and make a lone pair.
So now this carbon's electron deficient, so that's positive, and this carbon's electron rich, so it's negative. And then what we could do is then we could take the lone pair and move it down to make a double bond and move this pi bond up to make a lone pair. And then that would take us to So we didn't do anything to the carbon on the left, so it's still positive. Now there's a double bond between these two carbons. And now there's a lone pair on that carbon, so now that carbon's negative. Okay, so that would be the two possible. Of course, we could have gone, the electrons could have gone the other way. We could have started on the right and moved the electrons to the left. <clears throat> okay, so, so basically two three resonance structures for the molecule. So we we could have done things all in one move. We could have we could have coupled coupled moves together. So we could have for example, we could have moved that to there. Right? That's as far as a double so a double bond can either go straight up onto an atom to make a lone pair or it can move over to the next bond to make a double bond. So if we take this and move those electrons over to make a double bond then we have to get rid of the next double bond otherwise we put five, bond, five bonds on this carbon we can't put five bonds on carbon so if we move the double bond over to the next position then we have to move this double bond up and that takes us directly to that structure right okay so what did this basically look like if we looked at the the electrons in the pi system So each carbon's sp2, so each carbon has a p orbital. And each of those p orbitals has one electron in them. So basically what we did, so let's call this molecule A. So this is A, and let's call this B, and we'll call this C. So to go from A to B, basically what we did is we simply moved that electron there. So now that carbon's electron deficient. Uh, now this p orbital, it could either be a p orbital or to rehybridize to an sp3 hybrid orbital that's got a lone pair. And then these both still have one. And then to get to structure C, what we basically did is we moved this electron there and this electron, one of these electrons there. So then we have, if we just look at the pi system only, so that one's electron deficient. Now this one's got one electron. Uh, so we're letting these overlap to make double pi bond, right? And we're letting those overlap to make a pi bond. Um, so now we're letting those overlap to make a pi bond, and then this is a lone pair, so that's negative. And that would be what C looks like. <clears throat> okay, so just a couple more examples. So if we draw a more resonance structure for this molecule. Uh, so you have an electron-rich atom, atom with a lone pair, next to a pi system. So that would be equivalent to, that would be equivalent to this. So what we can do is take the lone pair, move it down to make a double bond, and take one of the double bonds, move it up to make a lone pair. And that will give you that resonance structure. And that's the only thing that you can do. So something that student, students make mistakes all the time drawing resonance structures. For example, maybe they do this. Take that lone pair and move it there to make a double one. And then they do that. <clears throat> and this is totally wrong. Why is this wrong? It's wrong because of that atom right there. 
So that atom is this atom, that carbon, right? That carbon's got two hydrogens on it. So if you drew all of your hydrogens out on these carbons, so if you put the double bond there, nitrogen is flying, but carbon is not. Right, you got 10 electrons on it, so you can't put a double bond on that carbon. Um, so you always, so sometimes it's useful when you're drawing resonance structures if you just sketch all of your hydrogens out. That way, you know, if you're just looking at the molecule like this, it looks okay. It looks like just an alkene, but you have to keep in mind there's really two hydrogens on that carbon because when you're drawing resonance structures, all of the atoms have to stay, stay in the same place. So you can't lose hydrogens. So you can't put five bonds on a carbon, so that's a totally inappropriate structure. And, and again, if you're drawing resonance structures, the electrons have to move through the pi system. So that's the only part of the molecule that matters in terms of resonance. Okay, so if we drew some resonance structures for this molecule, so you have an electron deficient atom next to a pi system. And so that would be equivalent to drawing resonance structures like we did uh, for this, right? Electron deficient atom next to a pi system. So what we want to do is simply move the double bond over. Double headed arrow. Um, so now we have a double bond there and nothing else has changed. So everything else is still the same. But now this carbon is electron deficient. Right, that carbon had four bonds to begin with. And that, it's only got one hydrogen, right? So if you draw all of your hydrogens out, this is what the molecule looks like. So that carbon only has one hydrogen. So this carbon only has three things attached to it, so it's positively charged. And now we have a positive next to a pi system still, so we can take the next double bond and move it over. Now the double bond is there and the double bond is there. Doesn't matter if you draw it inside or outside the ring, although it's more customary to draw double bonds inside the ring. Okay, so one thing about resonance structures is net charge has to stay the same. So the structure on the left has a net plus one charge. So every structure you draw has to have a net plus one charge or it's wrong. Okay, so where's the positive at now? Because this structure, uh, so if we call this A, B, and C, well, which, which atom is electron deficient? And that's going to be that carbon right there. Right, that carbon used to have four bonds, had double bond and two single bonds, and now it's only got three single bonds, so it's electron deficient, so it's only got six electrons around it. And then we can draw one more resonance structure. So now we can take a lone pair on oxygen and move it down to make a double bond between carbon and oxygen. So now that oxygen only has one lone pair, and nothing else has changed, so those two double bonds are still there. And so now, where's the positive charge at? Well, if you calculate the formal charge on oxygen, six valence minus three lines and minus two dots, it's plus one. So that oxygen is plus one. So your net charge has stayed the same on all of your structures. Okay, so this molecule has four significant resonance structures. And then lastly, in resonance structures, well, then you always have to ask yourself, well, what, what does the molecule look most like, or what is the major contributor? Uh, so these are the basic rules. So first of all, the molecule that has the maximum number of octets is going to be the most stable. And then, what, and then you would go to more secondary things, like it's put the negative on the most electronegative atom. So oxygen would rather be negative than carbon. Oxygen would rather be negative than nitrogen. Nitrogen would rather be negative than carbon. Uh, put the positive on the least electronegative atom or the most electropositive atom. If you're going to have multiple charges in a structure, it's best to have those charges close together. So uh, the closer charges, opposite charges are, the more stable the molecule is going to be. And then always keep in mind, do not violate the octet rule by pouring more than eight electrons on an atom or more than two electrons on hydrogen. And re remember, you can only move pi bonds and lone pairs. You cannot move atoms. 
Okay, so if we use these rules and we took the structures A, B, C, and D, so this molecule, what does it look most like? And so molecule A has an electron deficient atom there, no octet. B has no octet there. C has no octet there. Molecule D, every atom has an octet. So that, so molecule D is the most stable. That's the major resonance contributor. Uh, so what would be next? Uh, it's a tough call because they all have an electron deficient atom on carbon. So they're all, A, B, and C are pretty equivalent. Um, if we took this molecule, um, what's the major contributor? So let's see. So we had two, two A and B. And in both structures, every atom has an octet. Um, so then we would need to go, um, well, we should have another rule here. Um, minimal number of non-zero. Minimal number of non-zero formal charges. So if we go back to these two structures, a and B, um, they everything has an octet, but A has zero formal charges and B has formal charges, a plus and a negative, so A is better than B. So the molecule looks more like A, um, but B is a significant resonance structure. It's got, so molecule, so the molecule does have, look a little bit like B, but it looks more like A. Okay, so that's resonance. It's a difficult concept. Hopefully it made sense. Um, and definitely worth practicing some of these.